I'm going to call this meeting to order at 4 p.m. Adoption of the agenda. The West Elgin Council hereby adopts the regular council agenda for June 27th, 2024, as presented. Could I have a mover, please? Deputy Mayor Tellier, seconded. Councillor, uh, excuse me. Statham. Statham. Sorry about that. Oh, okay. It's carried. Thank you. All in favour. Disclose you of any pecuniary interest. Seeing none. We're going to go um, to a closed session. Could you have the recommendation, please? That the Council of the Municipality of West Elgin hereby proceeds into closed session at 4.02 p.m. to discuss matters pursuant to the Municipal Act, Section 239.2a, being the security of the property of the municipality, and Section 239.2c, a proposed or pending acquisition or disposition of land by the municipality. Mover, please. Deputy Mayor Tellier, seconder. Councillor Denning, all in favour? It's carried. Thank you. We're now in close. We're reporting from closed session. Could you please? Reporting from closed at 5.24 p.m. Council received three, three items pursuant to the Municipal Act, Section 239.2. Council provided staff administrative direction, including the following two recommendations. Recommendation one is that West Elgin Council received a report from Embadura CAO Treasurer regarding IT security assessment, and that West Elgin Council approves a quote from Cypher Canada Inc. in the amount of $19,200 plus applicable taxes. Move. Mover, please. Councillor Navakis, seconded. Councillor Denning, all in favour? It's carried, thank you. Recommendation number two is that West Elgin Council declare surplus municipality, municipally owned lands known as the McPherson Road Extension, an open road allowance, and that West Elgin Council authorize the clerk to proceed with implementing the procedures prescribed in bylaw 2019-14, being a bylaw to adopt and maintain a policy with respect to the sale or other disposition of land owned by the municipality of West Elgin. Mover, please. Deputy Mayor Tellier, second. Councillor Denning, all in favour? It's carried. Thank you. <clears throat> is that is that the, all the reports? Okay. Adoption of the minutes. That West Elgin Council hereby adopt the minutes of June 13th, 2024, as presented. Mover, please. Councillor Statham. Seconded. Deputy Mayor Tallier. All in favour? It's carried. Thank you. <clears throat> Any business arising from the minutes? Seeing none. Staff reports, planning. Welcome, Robert. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. If you could uh, proceed, please. <clears throat> uh, certainly. Uh, good afternoon to everybody. Uh, the application oh. before you is on uh, Oskin's line. Uh, this is actually just west of uh, the town office. Uh, the applicant submitted... Uh, a request to uh, Elgin County to subdivide the property. Uh, it's just a little over four acres in size uh, and has a frontage of uh, 319 and a half feet. Uh, right now, the property contains along the west side a contractor's yard and shop, and along the east side uh, next to the town office uh, and works yard, uh, a mini storage uh, business. Uh, the applicant would like to subdivide the lot uh, it's my understanding that the, the contractor's business has been sold to a, 
another party uh, and they're looking to uh, to retain the mini storage uh, property uh, on its own. Uh, so what's being proposed is uh, the creation of a 2.87 acre lot for the uh, contractor's yard uh, and they'll retain uh, just a bit over uh, an acre uh, for the mini storage uh, business and office that operates the, uh, the mini storage itself. Each of the properties has a private on-site septic system. Uh, those will require inspection as sort of part of the standard uh, consent requirements for um, properties on, on partial servicing. Uh, my understanding, they, they both have separate water connections, but I have included just as a safeguard a condition in there uh, to confirm that uh, moving forward. You know, they both have separate uh, water connections. Uh, the policies have been reviewed. Uh, these are industrially designated lands. Uh, locally, uh, they do appear in the county official plan as agricultural uh, area. However, uh, the county does recognize that there are some differences in, in land use designations uh, and defers to the local designation and zoning uh, when it comes to uh, things such as lot creation uh, moving forward. Uh, the zoning is not impacted by this. It's a, it's an M1 zone. Uh, the lot line has been located in such a way to uh, make sure that there's adequate frontage as well as lot area uh, and setbacks from all of the buildings. Uh, the, uh, the septic location on the, uh, the mini storage business, uh, if, if you reviewed the report, you'd notice there was a bit of a jog in the lot line towards the front. Uh, that was in order to make sure that the septic bed was on the, uh, on the mini storage business. Uh, and as part of the inspection, I have to confirm setbacks um, prior to setting the, the line. Uh, they can make any changes to the, to the severance uh, prior to registration if there's a need to, to move it a little bit to accommodate that. Uh, so unless there's questions from council uh, or anyone in attendance, that is all I have, Mr. Mayor. Okay, thank you very much. Questions from council? I'm seeing none. Could I have the recommendations, please? <clears throat> that West Elgin Council hereby receives the report from Robert Brown Planner regarding severance application file E-47-24, comments to Elgin County Planning Report 2024-16, and that West Elgin Council hereby recommends approval to the Land Division Committee for the Elgin for the County of Elgin for severance application file E-47-24, subject to the lower tier municipality conditions in Appendix 1 of this report. And further, that West Elgin Council directs administration to provide this report as municipal comments to the County of Elgin. Could I have a mover, please? <clears throat> Deputy Mayor Tellier? Second. Councillor Danny, all in favour? <clears throat> Carried. Thank you. And we'll move on to operations and community services, horse-drawn vehicle signage policy. Lee, if you'd take that over, please. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Mayor and Committee Council. Um, so if you remember back uh, earlier in the spring, uh, staff did receive a request from uh, citizens living in the north part of the municipality that they felt that there uh, is a need or would be a need for uh, horse-drawn vehicle signage. Um, as we had some new residents to West Elgin that utilize that type of transportation. So... Um, we did reach out to uh, neighboring municipalities that also have that uh, in the eastern end of the county. Um, although they do utilize some of that signage, they don't, none of them had a formal policy about uh, when it should be placed and where it should be placed. So that uh, we reached out to our municipal insurance provider and got some direction from them. Um, essentially, they told us to create a policy and then get that reviewed and then bring that forward. So um, we did, uh, if you see the attached policy, we did create a policy. Um, uh, we used, we do have a policy for signage for uh, people with, uh, uh, for accessibility signage. So we use that as a template. And uh, then we took the information from, right from the Ontario Traffic Manual uh, as far as to where that, uh, or when that signage should be used and also from the traffic specialist at Intact Insurance, which is our municipal insurance provider, as to uh, the, the criteria 
that should be used for the placement of that sign. So we put that together into that policy. Um, I'm bringing it forward to council today in draft form. I haven't, I'm getting the cart slightly before the horse, no pun intended. <laughs> uh, just, we haven't received official confirmation from uh, the solicitor yet, but I don't feel there'd be any issues because like I said, the information is directly from the OTM. So um, if council has uh, any concerns, they can certainly answer those questions. If not, uh, I felt bringing it this way, then I expect to hear back any time, then I can just go ahead and we can go ahead and actually uh, implement the policy and get the signage in place. Anybody would like to speak? Councillor Statham. Thank you very much, Lee. And through the chair, I just wanted to ask, was there any kind of a, a sense of how many of these signs we would be installing? Um, I believe for the uh, the area in question that we're talking about, kind of the Morrison Road, Gibb line, uh, Beattie line area, we're probably looking at about six signs, which would cover us uh, as far as the criteria and the policy. Perfect. Thank you. Anyone else? I personally just think it, that it is a, a needed thing. So there are some pretty steep hills and people tend to come down the middle of the road pretty fast over the top of a hill. And if there's a horse-drawn buggy there, it, it can be uh, nice. So I, I think it would be nice that we at least um, try to warn people that there may be horses on the road. Thank yeah, you. I Sorry, and through the chair, I think just to uh, reiterate, I, I think I had that in my report earlier in the spring that, you know, there is obviously the cost associated with installing the signs right off the bat, but council should be aware that there may be other areas that are identified down the road, which we would use the policy like we would vet by the policy. Um, and also, especially with a new sign, when you introduce a new sign to an area, um, we do know through past, through history that we will be replacing um, some of those signs for the first couple years. Uh, so there, there will be a cost associated, not just the, the upfront cost of the installation, but obviously maintenance and, and replacements going forward. But Okay, thank you. Can I have the recommendation, please, for that? That West Elgin Council hereby receives the report from Lee Gosnell, Manager of Operations and Community Services regarding horse-drawn vehicle signage policy, and that West Elgin Council approves the horse-drawn vehicle signage policy as presented. Can I have a mover, please? Councillor Statham, seconder. Deputy Mayor Tellier, all in favour? It's carried, thank you. Finance and Administration. <clears throat> Update report, 2024. Yes, uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. So this is um, continuation. This report is continuation from a previous council meeting. Um, pay equity um, review is completed now, and it was uh, presented to council in closed session in great detail. Uh, the report is just to support, um, um, the purpose of the report is to support, um, uh, provide information to the public, uh, to the bylaw that council will be passing uh, tonight. And as I mentioned, a full um, report with recommendations is attached um, to my report uh, for a public view. Okay, thank you. Any questions? Seeing none, could I have the recommendation, please? <clears throat> that West Elgin Council hereby receives the report from Embadura, CAO Treasurer, regarding 2024 compensation update report, and that West Elgin Council approves proposed 2024 employee remuneration schedule as presented in Schedule A. Mover, please. Councillor Denning moves. Second. Deputy Mayor Tellier. All in favour? It's carried. Committee and board reports or updates. Notice of motion. It seems there's none received. Oh, committee and board reports and updates. Okay. Written differently on the sheet of paper. I think that's fine. 
Okay. I'll come to Dennis. Mr. Mayor, thank you. I'll start with the arena update. So uh, uh, our August 24th renaming ceremony is a go, of course. Uh, we are, the planning committee has been busy putting everything together. At this point, we have, um, we, we have confirmation from the Hockey Hall of Fame that they're going to be with us on the 24th. Um, Craft Hockeyville Trophy will be there, as well as an opportunity for anybody who didn't have a chance to buy some of the West Lorne Hockeyville hats or shirts. Whatever's left will be available. Uh, Bo Horvat will be with us for the day. Um, he will be um, helping us with the uh, new uh, name, logo, signage, unveiling, as well as available to sign autographs throughout the course of the event for anybody who's interested. Uh, radio station from St. Thomas is... Uh, going to be there. Uh, they might actually be there all day to do music and interviews with Bo. Uh, so it's looking to be like a really great event and uh, looking forward to seeing the, the entire community out. And uh, hopefully the event will be a great opportunity for us to uh, begin creating awareness about uh, fundraising for the balance of the cost of, uh, for the renovations of the arena. Well, thank you for that. Sounds good. <clears throat> Anyone else? Yes, Deputy Mayor Terry, please. Thank you for that, uh, through the chair. So um, for the Recreation Committee, we have everything ready for Canada Day, all planned. Flyers are out. Volunteers are in place. We concentrated on um, rec-based activities. So three and three, basketball, um, an art mural, um, a feathers, and different things. So... Uh, pickleball, different demonstrations. The community's really come out. We approached the uh, lawn bowling club and they're doing a demonstration. I'm also on Heritage Homes. So for Heritage Homes, we uh, couldn't have our meeting this past week. So it's moved again to next week, um, this coming week. And uh, we're still going ahead with different things, but they've been lots of gardening, lots of stuff going on there in regards to getting ready for the 30th anniversary of the West Island Community Health Center. So things look great for the parking lot and everybody coming because lots of people are coming from Far and wide and dignitaries and such. Uh, I'm also on the Old Town Hall. And um, for the Old Town Hall, we had a meeting with two of our three new members this past Tuesday. And I think it was Tuesday. I don't know. My days are running into each other. Sorry. And it was great. Um, lots of ideas, lots of ideas about fundraising, where to get grants from, accessibility to maybe cover the um, elevator, uh, heritage grants, arts and arts grants for the upstairs, different ideas to uh, get that going. And everyone was pretty uh, energetic about that. Um, and that's it. So I guess Fairboard and Rodney Park revitalization are the other two. Yeah, thank you. Anyone else got anything? Okay, thank you. Notes of motion. None received, is there? Council inquiries and announcements. Correspondent. Oh, Deputy Mayor Tele. Thank you, through the chair. So I had a question. So how we get our baskets um, uh, in our communities in the summertime, which by the way, they look amazing. I've had lots of great compliments. So thank you for all the hard staff Jen, or hard work for Jen and other staff doing that. Um, but wondering if we can do the same thing or if we already have a program for um, benches. I just know the community I grew up in does that, and I saw Southwold does that, where people can um, say, I like to put a bench in my old soccer coach's name or something that passed away, and I'd really like it to be in the Miller Park. So when you want to replace a bench in Miller Park, can I be on the list to put in $1,200 or whatever the X amount is for the bench in Miller Park in my soccer coach's name or whatever that you know helped me out or whatever? I'm just giving an example, but yeah, just something like that along the same lines of our um, uh, hanging baskets, but, uh, you know, I just know, like, for example, my parents love to read, so I would pick one by the library or whatever it was. I just didn't know if we could think about doing something like that in the future, in the future. I don't know if council thinks that's an idea, or maybe we don't replace our benches enough, or maybe we need more in our parks. It also came up the idea because we're going to do the Rodney revitalization and we probably would want to put some green spaces there. Maybe that would offset some costs for the benches there. Just an idea I had. Okay. Yes, please. 
Certainly that's something I can reach out to the other municipalities, as you mentioned, Southwold uh, has a program in place like that. So I can reach out to them to see what kind of, what their program looks like. And we can, I can bring a report back to council at a future meeting and we can mimic a policy or procedure, something similar to that. Sure. That'd be great. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. So we go that, that's about, so 12 correspondence. You've all had a chance to read those. <clears throat> Um, the next is, is it? Yes, please. The recommendation is that West Elgin Council hereby receive and file all correspondence not otherwise dealt with. Mover. Councillor Denning, seconder. Deputy Mayor Tellier, all in favour? It's carried. Yes. I believe for 13.1, uh, the... Um, the applicant is out in the foyer and would like to come in and attend if that's okay. Oh, <clears throat> that's what we're going to now. Thirteen. <clears throat> I think it, I think he could be granted and, and put it and come in if he wants to. Procedures. No, we can't talk, can we? Mm -hmm. Oh. Is he gone? Oh. I do not see him. Okay. <laughs> That's good enough. He's welcome to come in if he wants to, but he can't speak at the moment. Okay, we've got 13.1 portable uh, a restaurant, the Old Boys Park, or Glasgow Trailer Park. Uh, this request is being brought to council. It was received um, and attached both the email and or the email from the applicant and along with the, the menu and a small picture of the portable trailer. Um, so certainly I'll open this discussion up to council. There's three options presented there. Um, of course, we can, however council wishes to proceed. Council and Abacus. Uh, through the chair, I'm just wondering if we had any interest in someone renting the existing space, because that would be more income, and it was already there. It's my first question. And then looking at this letter, I have a concern with the five-year lease. I don't feel comfortable signing a lease, especially as it's a movable vehicle. Um, doesn't seem necessary, uh, but it looks like he would be wanting to pay a little bit less. And if we already have someone who's interested in renting the existing kitchen space that we have. I, I, Lee, I, uh, I think at the moment we don't have anybody for the, or do we? Or is that a... Uh, through the chair. Um, so the letter was received on June 24th or sent on June 24th. By sheer utter coincidence, on June 24th, we had somebody come into the office and speak with me regarding possibly utilizing the existing food booth. Uh, it is it is somebody that has a trailer in the park. It's a resident of the park um, that approached us. Like I said, sheer coincidence, uh, we put this out, uh, an RFP with, we sent it out with all the contracts and the, back at the beginning of the year, uh, to get people, you know, so that if anybody was interested, um, we advertised that we never received any interest at all. And then on the exact same day, we had two people come forward with two different proposals, obviously. But uh, so um, there are there are benefits and drawbacks to both. Um, we're still working through with the uh, with the people that are looking at the food booth and they're currently um checking to see for insurance purposes obviously they have to carry insurance on that when they're doing that so it's that's not a definite thing with them but they I did provide them with all the information with regards to what it takes to use that space and they're working through that so um certainly whichever way council is leaning um we'll probably still work with both of them to see to get an idea of where they finally, one may say, they may come back and say, I, you know, we, we can't get the insurance or it's going to cost way too much to have insurance. 
um, which may leave this as the only option. Um, but certainly I think that whichever way council chooses to go to be fair to either one of these um, people would be to let them know sooner than later, because it is going to take them a bit to get set up, to get stocked, to get their um, uh, inspections with Southwest Public Health. So, you know, we're already at the end of June. So if that's a, a week or two for them to get up and running, that's already into July. So that that's cutting down, you know, that's part of their summer already gone. So the sooner we can get this set up, the better. So, yeah, thank you for that. I can see a need for something like that on the trailer park, especially as the trailer parks changed so much over the last few years and they, they're getting younger people in there with, with smaller children. I mean, they all want an ice cream or whatever they want. And uh, it's nice to, nice to have that facility there for them to use. I'd, have we got, uh, will it take a lot of money to, to put that booth back in commission? Uh, no, we the booth operated for the latter half of the season last year. Um, so uh, there would be some cleaning and, uh, and a couple inspections that would need to be done to get that up and going. Um, so, you know, I think probably if you were to look at the two proposals, um, the the uh, the ones that are proposing to be into the food in the food booth, I think it would be limited to your ice cream, hot dogs, the, those easy things. Um, so fairly limited menu, we'll say. Uh, but it, it is in the booth and the booth is already there and set up and, and whatnot, right? So we're not utilizing any more space. Uh, this, this letter here, um, I think the menu items like the, that would give them, and, and to echo your point, this is something that is, very much wanted by people in the park and i think that they would support sure. either one right um but i think that them this would get provide a bigger selection for them and it this type of thing may draw in people from outside the park as well like people that come that they used to come for fish and chips on friday night yeah. right like back um yeah a few years back so the downside to this one certainly is uh and i agree with councillor Navagas. I, I don't think a five-year lease is something that we would entertain right now until, no, I, you know, but um, it, we also would have to find a spot for this trailer that had hydro water and sewer hookups. Um, so that, you know, that may mean uh, utilizing a spot that we would traditionally use for transient camping. That's right. And you can't have competition on that one side anyway. No, hey, either you, you're going to have, yeah, you're going to have to do one or the other. Absolutely. Did, yes. did the park like other people coming in for dinner at there? And just the gentleman in the trailer is going to have to do more sales than the people in the food booth are going to need to do. So my guess is, is that the trailer business is going to have to promote and try to get more people in because he has probably more overhead costs than this. And I'm just wondering... And the person who did it last year didn't come back this year. Um, through the chair. So to answer the first part of the question, I, I don't think, I, I don't remember there being an issue with people coming on a Friday night. Like they had that one night where it was like a, a special and people would come from outside the park. And I, I don't remember that being an, an issue. Um, you I know, my, sorry. I, my concern is, is that, the food truck is really easily to move and so say we choose the food truck and he's not doing the sales that he necessarily was hoping to It'd be very easy for him to go place else right and then we are turning down someone who is doing business in the booth that can't pick up and go like I'm, con I, that would be my concern that we go with the food truck and he decides it's not working and he leaves and we've turned down people who were willing to stay. So, yeah, I think um, through the chair, I think that the last year, uh, the the gentleman that was in, um, you know, it, it's a commitment to be there seven days a week or six, anyways, yeah. five or six days a week, and uh, you know, the more limited the menu the less revenue you're going to bring in. So 
you know, is it worth it to spend what in that amount of time? That's why a lot of these uh, uh, concession stands, the canteen at the arena, that's why those types of things are getting very difficult, right? Because people, it, it's, it's, it is a big time commitment and, and it can be not a huge revenue generating thing, especially when you have a limited menu, like you would out of the food booth, um, which is why the, operator back in 2018 2019 did those things like fish and chips on friday night right because to sell a few ice cream cones or a couple cups of coffee on a tuesday wednesday thursday friday you know you made up for it by that by that evening where you had people coming in from outside the park and you you had a lot of sales so i see i see benefits to both i think that um this person obviously is very interested. I think that the people I, it will know more once um, we can finalize with the other people, whether or not they're actually, whether they can actually move forward with it. Um, but I guess maybe if council had some thoughts of whether they would rather, you know, um, one way or the other, if, if both, opportunities presented themselves if you had any opinion on which way you prefer to see i'd like to see the booth used we own the booth and the fish fryers and the chip fryers and everything's still there in good condition i'd, I'd like to see the property with that we own being utilized that's just me deputy mayor Terry. Uh, through the chairs, so um, the hours on the booth, they make their own hours there. I just know I, I uh, went there last year and there were, to Councillor Vacas's question, there were quite a few people from outside the trailer park at the time. It wasn't a special or anything on I think just people were coming up from the beach and it was a little crowd at the beach. Yep. So they decided to give their business to the trailer park booth. But um, did they just set their own hours? Yeah, I did. So we, the RFP that we had created that we put out, so that's um, if we had had more than one person come forward, that's how we would obviously, they would make a proposal based on hours of operation, menu, those types of things. Um, my understanding, and, and don't quote me on this, my understanding is that they were looking, that the people looking for the to operate the food booth um, were looking at like 11 to 7 okay. each day. And then, um, so they've just inquired, you said on the 24th, let's say 28th, and they, um, or 27th, I guess, um, they, did they know how long it was going to take to inquire about insurance and her turnaround time or? Um, I just had an email from them today. Their insurance provider had asked uh, us for an approximate value of the equipment and stuff. So I provided that to them. So I, tomorrow, possibly early, earlier, or very Tuesday. early next week. Okay, and then my last question was, do we not have a bylaw about food trucks? And if so, does this, is it part of it? I thought we were making one last council. Last time a council in regards to food trucks in our community. It never went through. Oh, okay. That's what my other question was. All right. Thank you. Any other? Yes. Okay. Through the chair. I'm all about selling. I'm like, sell the equipment. Why are we in the kitchen equipment? There's the hoods and the cleaning and all of that stuff. I've been in kitchens. It's a pain. Equipment breaks. The food truck to me is the way to go because I think there's lots of people out there who have gotten into this kind of mobile so that you can maybe keep them. My only concern with the food truck is that it's easy for them to pull out if they're not doing the sales. And then we leave the park with no food. So I want some sort of commitment from this gentleman to either the times that he was going to be there and not a year lease, but I being responsible for kitchen equipment and the hazards and the liability of people in there. If someone else is willing to put their equipment out there, I would, I would take that. Yes, Councilor Denny. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Just just to add to the conversation, because this gentleman was the one who reached out to me uh, initially, his intention, if he was successful in, in negotiating an arrangement with West Elgin, would be to start next year, not this year. Oh, that didn't, that didn't come across that way in the letter. 
sorry. Oh, I, I assumed that he was going to be starting like in a... It says, okay. I think it says I the think... letter he's starting this year. Could you? You can sit over there, but... That's here. Pardon? This is the gentleman. Yeah. How do you do? Okay. I'm afraid at the meeting you, we can't allow you to speak because it wasn't... Okay, I'd like to listen. Okay. <laughs> we were just uh, absolutely looking at, uh, at the options. So we've got one, two, and three. Mr. Mr. Mayor, just a point of order. Madam Clerk, is it appropriate to ask the gentleman uh, for that final clarification about the timing of things in, in the, at this moment? Uh, to properly proceed, yes. To proceed with a proper answer, then yes, that if counsel is asking the question. Okay. Say that again. Please. So, so essentially, Mr. Mayor, what we're looking for from um, the gentleman who's who sent the letter is a clarification on whether or not, um, if this was successful, that he would be starting this year or at the commencement of next year. Well, can I ask him that question? Yeah. Yeah. Did you hear that that question? If yeah. can Councillor Denny will ask it you again, please disclose it. Sam, just for some clarification, if you were successful in negotiating an agreement with West Elgin to provide food services through your truck at Port Glasgow Park, would this be commencing next year or this year? I, I think this year is going to be too quick, and I think I'll be able to be ready. Yes, I'd like to start in proper time of year. It's, it's, it's already July, by the time I set up and all that's going to be the end of July, it's going to be too late and I'm going to start, I will do the proper, do it the proper way when I do it. You'd like to start at the beginning of the season, that's yeah, what you're trying to say. Take my time to get ready and do the proper thing. I think we should go to council option three. Yeah, so within saying that, thank you for that, sir. Um, I guess you would option three with a little twist that we re-examine it for next year. But yeah. earlier in the year, so the gentleman can get his uh, everything in order, insurance in order, ordering his food and such. So option three is what makes sense then. Madam Clerk, does everybody, what do, I think option three is the one we're looking at right now. Okay. Um, so I'll, I'll read the recommendation. That West Elgin Council hereby acknowledge receipt of the portable restaurant request from Sam Sam Tuntis to operate a portable restaurant at Port, Port Glasgow Trailer Park, Old Boys Park, and that Council defers the request to be re-examined later in the year to commence the project in 2025. Okay, so move and second for that. Move Deputy Mayor Telly, seconder, Councillor Statham. All in favour? It's carried. Thank you. Okay, notification requirement for liquor licence. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. This item was brought to Council. It is simply just a requirement of the applicants under uh, the Alcohol Gaming Commission that they do need to notify the municipality and the notification also went out to local uh, fire departments and OPP just as a requirement. Yeah, they. I think they've done this for years and we've never had any problems as I know to. Correct. So um, could I, would you like the recommendation, please? The West Elgin Council hereby acknowledge receipt of the event notification from the St. Elijah Orthodox Church for their event to be held on Sunday, August 4th, 2024, as a requirement from the Alcohol and Gaming Commission of Ontario, AGCO. Okay, a mover, please. Deputy Mayor Tellier. Seconded. Councillor Denning. All in favour? It's carried. Thank you. So we go 14 bylaws. Employee remuneration. 
that bylaw 2024-48, a bylaw to amend bylaw 2023-103, being a bylaw to set rates of remuneration for municipal employees, be read a first, second, third, and final time. Move it, please. Councillor Statham. Second. Deputy Mayor Tellier. All in favour? It's carried, thank you. 14.2, authorising by law, funding agreement for renewed Canada Community Building Fund. That bylaw 2024-49, being a bylaw to authorize the execution of an agreement between the Corporation of the Municipality of West Elgin and the Association of Municipalities of Ontario, AMO, for the purpose of municipal funding agreement on the Can Canada Community Building Fund to be read a first, second, third, and final time. Move it, please. Councillor Denning, seconder. Councillor Statham, all in favour? It's carried, thank you. 15, confirm by law. That bylaw 2024 50, being a bylaw to confirm the proceedings of the regular meeting of council held on June 27th, 2024, be read a first, second, third, and final time. Move it, please. Deputy Mayor Tellier, seconded. Councillor Statham, all in favour? It's carried. Adjournment. That West Elgin Council hereby adjourn at 6.03 p.m. to meet again at 4 o'clock p.m. on Thursday, July 18th, 2024, or at the call of the chair. Move it, please. I add something before we go. Yeah. On your 80th birthday, we're very happy for this milestone, and we all as council and staff wish you well. I think it should be noted, so thank you. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. <laughs> Okay, so um, we're going back to adjournment. <laughs> <laughs> and I want to move room seconder. And so Councillor Denning, so moves. Deputy Mayor Tellier, seconds, all in favour. I can just still pick my hand up. Okay, thank you very much. <laughs> and I outed your face, everybody. <laughs> That's okay. We're adjourned. Yeah, we're adjourned. Thank you very much.